I absolutely hate it when you open your fridge and you realize something has gone bad. So today I'm sharing with you 17 different items that freeze well, along with a few tips and tricks. With all the food prices just going up and up, the freezer can be your best friend. So right now you're gonna go to your freezer, take out all the stuff you're not gonna use or that has gone bad because we're gonna freeze some stuff today. If you're ready, let's do it. Now the first thing that I'd love to freeze are freezer meals. Now this is not your ordinary freezer meal. A lot of you had talked about that you only have like two people in your family. So I'm gonna show you how to make freezer meals for two to four people instead of like six to eight. Now some of the easiest freezer meals to split into twos or threes would be meatballs or chicken. So today I'm gonna make my Hawaiian meatballs. Now you wanna make sure that you are using a freezer meal bag and that you write on your bag. Now we're gonna do the title Hawaiian meatballs seven minutes in your Instant Pot, three to four hours in your slow cooker. You can also put the date on here if it's gonna be in your freezer for a while. I love to get three freezer meal bags ready. We're gonna split this into third, so it'll be for about two servings. And then I love my little stands because it just holds everything open for you. So I'm gonna take some frozen meatballs and we're gonna kind of split them into thirds. So I'm gonna pour a third into that one, a third into that one, and then about a third into that one. So the next thing it calls for is the pineapple chunks. Now it says not to drain it. So I'm going to carefully pour a little bit of juice into each bag. Cause we're just gonna try and make this as even as possible. It's not gonna be perfect. Most of our recipes will work splitting into thirds. Now you're gonna take about a third of the can. Again, I'm just eyeballing here. Okay, so now I cut up a pepper. It calls for a red pepper, but I had a green one ready to go. So we're just going to kind of split this into thirds. Sometimes easier to split it before you dump it in the bag. These look pretty even, so we'll just dump these right in. Now you're gonna make a little sauce that goes on top of it. So we have about one cup of brown sugar, two thirds cup of vinegar, and then two tablespoons of soy sauce. Then just mix that all together. All right, so to make this as even as possible, I'm gonna use like my one third cup and just do one third a cup at a time into each one, just so we're a little more even, because eyeballing liquid is a little harder when you want them to be very, very close. Okay, these are all done, so we are just going to zip them right up. Now I love doing meatballs or chicken and cut those into thirds because they're a lot easier because you know that the cook time will be the same. So meatballs will always cook for seven minutes. Chicken will always cook for 15 to 25 depending if it's thawed or frozen. The only thing that will change is if you're doing a roast. You'll have to cut that roast into like three different sections and it doesn't cook as long. So as long as you know the cooking times, cutting things into third are a breeze especially the chicken and meatballs. Number two is eggs. Did you know that you can freeze eggs? One of my favorite ways of doing it is to put all 12 eggs into a bowl, whisking them all together and cooking them that way. When you thaw them, this is perfect for breakfast when you're doing lots of scrambled eggs or even like an egg casserole. Freezing eggs will keep them from going bad. Number three is roasted vegetables. Now when you have a ton of vegetables that are about to go bad, I love roasting them and then you can stick them right in the freezer. So when it's time for a side dish, you have a side dish all ready to go. All you have to do is either microwave it or I like to air fry it. We had potatoes that were gonna go bad, carrots, peppers, and then zucchini. So I put a little olive oil on, a little bit of garlic salt, and then just cook them until the potatoes and the carrots are pretty soft that you can cut through them. So about, I don't know, 20 to 30 minutes. Now you wanna wait for this to cool completely before you put it into a freezer bag. Then when you're ready to put them in a freezer bag, make sure you label it, you put your date on it, and I like to fill up two freezer bags because there's usually that many vegetables it will last us for two side dishes for two meals. Number four, something that I always love to keep in the freezer are hot dogs. Because they are vacuum sealed, you can stick them in the freezer just like this. I also like to have buns in the freezer on hand so I have a meal literally ready to go on those really, really busy nights when it's like seven o'clock and I hadn't even started cooking yet. Okay, now my secret with the buns, if you stick this in your freezer, it will last for a few weeks, but I sometimes forget about it and so I get bad freezer burn. So I love taking my buns out of their original bag and putting them in an actual freezer bag. They will last a whole lot longer for you. You just wanna make sure that you get as much air out of them as possible and you can just stick it in the freezer just like this. All right, number five is fruit. Now I love to freeze fruit, especially if it's just about to go bad and you just don't have time to eat it. So I love doing pineapple. I have a special way to cut it. 
I can't wait to show you. This is my pineapple cutter. It will change your life. Oh, you love it. So first you're gonna take your pineapple, cut off the top and cut off the bottom. So now you can kind of see the middle of the pineapple. You're gonna line it up with the middle of your thing and just kind of gently press in. Then all you have to do is twirl, spin, twist, whatever you wanna call it. It's so easy. So I hold it still with one hand, I twist with the other. It doesn't take a lot of effort. Like my nine year old can do this so easily. You just wanna make sure that you just keep it straight. Okay, when you're all done, when you hit the bottom, you can just pull it straight up and your pineapple is all cut up. So now my trick is you're just going to slice it straight down as even as possible. I am not the best at this part. Then I just take the pineapple off and we're just going to just spread it out so it will freeze really easily. Then when you're all done, you're going to stick it in the freezer and do like a quick freeze. It will freeze very fast. Now with this little thing, the stem still stays in it. So you want to pop the lid off and you just want to push it right out. <laughs> I like using a butter knife. It makes it work a lot easier. Then you just throw that away. You just want to make sure you don't leave it in there. Now when your pineapple's all frozen, you're going to take it and put it into a freezer bag. Make sure you label the freezer bag and then stick it right back into the freezer. It will last up to three months like this. Now, real quick, if you didn't know, we have a freezer mill membership that you can join every month. You'll get 10 new freezer mills plus a shopping list, so it'll make your life a whole lot easier if you want to start trying to freeze things. Now, I'll put a link down below in the description for you. You can check it out. Number six, one thing I love finding is meat that's on sale, especially right now. Meat is expensive, so you can find it on sale, buy it. One of my most favorite things to find is ribs. Now, if you can find meat that's already vacuum sealed, you can take it and put it in your freezer and it can stay up to three to six months in your freezer. So my secret is to find the little sale tags on the meat game changer. Number seven is shredded chicken. Now I love cooking a ton of chicken, putting it in freezer mills, and then pulling it out whenever you need some already shredded chicken. Now you can also get rotisserie chicken, especially if they're on sale. Grab some of those, shred them up, put them in a freezer bag. Again, you can have it for later. It's a game changer. Number eight is fish. Now. About a year ago, my husband and I went to Alaska and we got the most amazing fish to bring home. The cool thing is if you vacuum seal it, it will last for a very long time. This fish has been in there a whole year and it still tastes amazing. Now you don't have to vacuum seal everything. If you can find good deals, make sure you buy a ton of fish, wrap it up really tight, put it in a freezer bag and it will last in your freezer for a while. Number nine is ground turkey. Now you can do this with ground beef or ground turkey, but I love doing it with ground turkey. I like it just a little bit more than ground beef. Now you can do two things. You can buy your turkey from the store and stick it in the freezer like that if it's gonna go bad. Or I like to cook mine all up, stick it in a freezer bag, then stick it into your freezer. It's so nice to have extra turkey on hand. Number 10 is leftover ham. Now I know what you're thinking. That's kind of a very specific one, but around holidays, we always have a ton of ham and my mom would always package it up in foil and stick it in the freezer. And we'd have it for all kinds of meals. One of my most favorite meals to make is our ham and pine roll-ups. They are amazing. I think that is my husband's number one meal that we make. Number 11, one of my favorite things to freeze is corn on the cob. Now growing up, my mom would cook tons and tons of corn and she would cut it all off, put it in baggies. It was like, I don't know, a seven, eight hour ordeal. It took forever. I am not like that. I love to take my corn on the cob and stick it directly like this into a freezer bag. My kids are fine to eat off the cob and actually I like it a lot too. It makes it a lot easier if your corn is going bad. Now if you don't have a vacuum sealer and you need to get all the air out, this is my mom's trick. You put a straw in and you suck out all the air. Number 12 is bread. I love freezing my bread. Now growing up, my parents, they had six daughters and we went through a ton of bread. Now that she's a little bit older, it's hard for them to get through one loaf of bread. So she taught me how to freeze bread. Now whether you have store-bought bread or if you make it homemade, this will still work. So what she does is she'll take a few pieces at a time. Like for example, I want two pieces together. I usually have two pieces for a sandwich and I'll just kind of put them together. You can put something between them like parchment paper, but it will still work if you just put them in individually, just like this. Okay, now the secret is to get all the air out. So I'm gonna do the straw trick again. There we go. <laughs> all right, number 13 is muffins. Now school is almost in session. I love having quick and easy breakfasts for my kids. So this is actually our two ingredient muffins. It's only bananas and a cake mix. You cook it, 
quick and easy. The best part is you can stick it in the freezer, put as many in that freezer bag as you want. When it's time to cook it, you just pull it out. I like to put it on a plate, stick it in the microwave, and you can even send the kids out the door with their muffin. Number 14 is freezer meal rice. Now I love this because you can cook it in your Instant Pot. You can cook a lot in your Instant Pot. So I like to cook six to eight cups at a time and then put about two to three cups of cooked rice into each freezer bag. Then I just stack them on top of each other and stick them right into the freezer. Number 15, now this one is one of those things that if it's on sale, you buy it. I freeze it just in the box and put it right into my freezer. It makes it super easy to pull out and really it's perfect when your butter goes on sale. Number 16 is cookies. Now I shared how I freeze cookie dough, but actually my husband grew up always freezing just already cooked cookies. I thought it was kind of crazy, but really I love it. I have cookies already made and then when you want just one cookie, you put it in the microwave, cook it up and eat it. And number 17 is cake batter. Now lots of times I'll make recipes and I have leftover cake batter or leftover brownie batter. Pretty much any type of batter you can freeze and use later. All you have to do is put it in the fridge like the night before, it will be perfectly ready to go when you need it. So along with freezing all these items, I also love making freezer meals. Now, if you want to join our fun little club, we have a freezer meal membership where you get 10 new freezer meals every single month along with a shopping list. So it makes life really simple. All right, you guys, if you want more freezer meals, I have plenty for you right up there and I'll see you next time. Bye.